Hey guys, it's Harleywood, welcome back. Today we're gonna take a look at the brand new Olite Balder Pro R, and we're gonna compare it against the Streamlight TLR2 HLG. Both of these are the green laser versions. And before we get too far into this review, I gotta say, I almost really messed this up. I'll get into more detail in a few minutes. Um, I almost really, really, really screwed this review up for you guys. All right, now both of these are unloaded and normally, Stream lights always activating. <laughs> Normally I don't show these um, and I don't compare them on the actual firearm, but I wanted to give you a size comparison as they're mounted up. Look at how much further out the Olight protrudes, okay? Look at how much taller and bulkier the stream light is. Now let's just talk about the elephant in the room. One, the Balder when it's not on sale is about $169. The Streamlight I paid for, and I paid a little over $300 on Amazon for it. Very, very expensive. And there's pros and cons to each, okay? So not just the con of the price on this. There really are some things I don't like about the Streamlight, and I have a few Streamlights on other guns. You've seen me buy them for videos in the past. Um, there's just a few things I really don't like that they did on this one. But that said, there are some things that I think it does better than the Olight, all right? so. It's really gonna come down to a couple different things for you guys. It's gonna come down to which one do you trust your life with, and it's gonna come down to form and function in a few different areas. We already talked about some of the size differences of these, and the function of these is quite different also. And those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know the lineup behind me here and what the purpose of it is. So every time there's an Olight flash sale, they send me a ton of product that is in the flash sale, and I usually give it all away to you guys, with the exception of a few things that I keep for future review purposes. Um, I did unbox this Balder Pro R, but they have sent me another one to give away to you guys. And I've got two more videos coming in the next few days, comparing a couple more products that you see on the table there with their predecessors. Today is not the giveaway announcement video. Don't leave, don't leave. <laughs> Today's not the giveaway announcement, but it is coming in the next few days. There is your close-up look at the Balder really, really protrudes quite far um, off the end there. And there's your closer look at the TLR2 HLG. So nice looking light, does have a TIR lens, whereas the Balder does not. And that may have something to do with the fact that the laser is built into the reflector there. I'm not sure if they could uh, do it properly with a TIR lens. Now the way that both of these mount is somewhat similar. So you can see I have this bolt backed off here and it gives me enough room to push the other side out, clamp it on the rail, and then twist this back down in order to secure it. The Olight does it a little bit differently. So here you can see I have that same ability to push it out and clamp it on the rail. And then there's a quick release throw lever that clamps it down tight. As I mentioned, the laser on the TLR here comes out of the bottom right there. And the way that you switch between the different modes is with this little toggle on the back here, okay? So you can actually read right here, laser light, light, and laser only, and you just flip the switch. Now here's what I'll say about that. I have done some shooting with this, and I did tend to knock it with my knuckle, all right? There were times where I actually switched this while I was shooting, and the laser went off on me. There you can see it mounted up, and you can see there's not a lot of clearance between the end of my knuckle there and that switch. And there was a few times that I flipped it with my knuckle and was able to change the settings. Adjusting the modes on the Olight is done with this inner ring, and there is probably zero risk of you accidentally changing this, okay? So you set it where you want it, it is tactile, it clicks in place. A little bit better design, I think, than that little toggle switch. Now the Streamlight comes with two CR123 batteries, and you do have to remove it from the flashlight in order to change them. All right, so you flip that toggle, and there you can see the two batteries in there. Lock it back, but again, then you'd have to re-zero that laser, make sure that it uh, returned to zero. Now the Olight's battery is internal, and it is chargeable externally without having to remove the light from the firearm with their proprietary charging caps. Some of you guys like these. If you're like me and you have, you know, a hundred different Olights and a hundred of these cables, it's not a big deal. And the Olight has a low battery status indicator right there. So that little LED light, the battery's not low right now, so it's not coming on, but it will illuminate when the battery is low. Now the Streamlight has the TIR lens in there that you can see. 
And as I mentioned, the Olight is just a reflector with the integrated laser in there. The Streamlight is 1,000 lumens. The Olight is 1,350. The Streamlight is 20,000 candela. The Olight is only 10,000. So you'll see when we take these out back, the TLR is going to put off quite a bit more light or at least appear to because of the way it focuses that 1,000 lumens. All right, here we go. Up first is the Streamlight. Now, if you're new to my channel, the barn is typically 61 yards when I do a flashlight review. Because this is only a thousand lumen weapon light, I've moved into 30 yards, and that barn is 14 feet tall at the peak. So it kind of gives you an idea about the size of the hot spot on this. Now, way back in the dark, back there in that dark spot, you can just barely see two white dots back in there. Those are steel targets at 71 yards, okay? All right, watch this on the streamlight. I'm gonna put my finger in front of the laser and watch, it'll come on for just a second and then flicker out. Look at that. And it dies. Look at it flickering. The light, something's wrong with the laser. It's fine on laser only mode. All right, stream light, not looking good for you. Let's just do it with light only and we'll compare the white lights. So let's move that off to the side and bring in the O-light. So laser's really strong on the O-light. It's not very bright though, what is going on? Stream light, O-light. Stream light, O-light. What? The O-light's more lumens, how is this possible? All right, so this is where I almost really messed this review up. When I shot that initial footage and I saw how dim the Olight was, I even went and got another handheld light that was a thousand lumens and I compared this versus that and I was like, man, that just doesn't look like a thousand lumens. And I even emailed my Olight rep and I told her, I said, you know, I'm not really impressed with this. The lumen output just, it doesn't seem right. And, um, Luckily, the next morning, I came back down, came out to my shop, I was cleaning a bunch of stuff up, and I decided to play with it a little bit more, and it just didn't look right to me. So I grabbed the user manual <laughs> and saw that there was actually two different modes to the balder. So once I put it in turbo, all that lumen output came to life, and I was like, oh, all right, now that I have it in the right mode, let's try this again. There is the Olight. <laughs> so that is the 1350 lumens. Sorry, guys, I had it in low mode and that is the Streamlight. So Olight, Streamlight. And for not having a TIR lens, the Olight's doing a really good job. The Streamlight has a TIR lens. So you can see the laser there for the Olight, nice and pronounced on the flag. You can see it glimmer off those targets back there at 77 yards, that steel target. See that little flicker? Move that off, bring the Streamlight back in. And I don't know what is going on with the laser on this thing, guys. It won't come on. It has cra it, it was working just a minute ago, and now it crapped out on me. All right, when you first get the Olight, it's going to be in a lockout mode. So there is a button sequence in order to unlock it, so make sure you follow the instructions. Now, you'll see I have it unlocked, and it is in a temporary mode, okay? So if you just click and release, the light goes out, all right? In order to put it into its working mode, click and hold the first button, click and hold the second button, and you'll see it brightens up a little bit and the laser actually comes on. So now it's unlocked and it's in kind of its duty mode. Now there's two brightness levels in here. There's 300 lumens and there's the 1350. What you see here is the 300 lumens. And while the light is on, if I simply double click any of the buttons, it goes into its high 1350 lumen mode. And with these toggles on the back, you can either press and hold and then release and it's momentary, or a quick click turns it on and then another quick click turns it off. So the Streamlight has this toggle switch on the back here. Now I just have it in laser mode so it doesn't blast us out. But depending on which way you flick the switch, it's either permanent 
or it's momentary. So you can see if I hold down here and release, it's momentary, or if I push up here and release, it's momentary. If I push up here, it's on, or if I push up, or if I push down here, it's on. But when the light is mounted with your support thumb, you can push down for momentary. You can flick it up to just turn it on, or you can use your index finger, push it down for on, or you can hold up for momentary. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do that because if you're on momentary, including the light, you know, if the light and the laser are on and then you need to get on target and release and go to the trigger, your light and your laser go off, all right? So if you're gonna do momentary, I would suggest it with your support hand. Now, in terms of the build construction, they both have all aluminum bodies on them. The switch housing on the back here for the Olight is plastic, but that's typically not one of the areas that's probably gonna be prone to impact, all right? It's tucked up against the trigger guard. And this entire rear plate on the Streamlight is also plastic, including the switch, unfortunately. And if you watch this, the switch is actually kind of flimsy, okay? I can actually flex it by just gently pinching it with my fingers, all right? See it kind of flexing in there? So I was a little bit surprised by that because when you push on it, it tends to have a little bit of give to it. And I, I wasn't really expecting that from Streamlight. So which one do I like better? Uh, I don't know. The size of the Streamlight is a little bit off-putting. I mean, look at the size of that thing on the end of the pistol. The length of the Olight is also a little bit off-putting. That thing really, really sticks out there. And if you're gonna appendix carry something like that, good luck. I will tell you, I don't like that switch underneath, okay? Uh, look, I literally just went to, to put my support hand on there and I flicked it. And, now the laser, you can't see it, but the, now the laser is off. I, I turned off the laser on accident. I also wish you didn't have to dismount the light in order to change the batteries out on the Streamlight. In previous versions, you've been able to take off the lens housing and change the batteries through the front, but because this uses two, I guess that wasn't really possible. Now, both of them have strobe, so when the Olight is on, if you press and hold and then click the other button, it goes into its strobe mode, click again to turn it off, and then when you click to turn back on, it goes back to the, the mode that it had before that. I think strobe's a little gimmicky, and it's also kind of procedural to get to it. Not only does light have to be on, but then you have to click and hold, click again on the other side. It's just a little bit cumbersome to get to. Now, the Streamlight also has strobe. Again, don't necessarily need it. And all you have to do to access it is double click the switch into the momentary direction. So on the support side, it's down. So if I double click it down and hold, you can see it goes into strobe, let go and it goes off. And a lot of people are just gonna flat out say they'd rather pay the money for something that is battle proven. Um, you know, I don't know that this model specifically is battle proven, but I think Streamlight has a long pedigree of quality. Um, I have abused the snot out of some of my previous Olights. I mean, just racked them into four by four, excuse me, six by six posts, trying to get the dot to shift point of aim. And I, I have never broken one of these. I have dropped them on concrete. I have never been able to cause one of these to fail. Again, a lot of people just wanna go for something that they know is tried and true. And a lot of people also have a problem that this is not made in the USA. Well, newsflash, neither is everything Streamlight makes, okay? Assembled in the US is not the same as made in the US. But what about you guys? Which one would you put your hard earned money into? Which one would you trust your life with? Sound off in the comments below. And I will put links to both of these down in the description below. Now, full disclosure, the one for Olight is an affiliate link, okay? If you do happen to click through and you buy this or you buy anything that I'm gonna show you later this week, I do get 10% of your purchase, all right? It's actually 10% less that Olight gets and that money comes to me instead. So if you appreciate all the information, the comparisons, the nighttime footage, all the giveaways, I'd appreciate you using that link. And that's it, guys. Now, the flash sale has technically started for VIP members, all right? And it's gonna run for the next several days. If you're not a VIP member, go to the website, Site, look at the timing on their homepage and you'll see when the flash sale starts for you. Now, I will be giving away and doing some additional comparison videos over the course of the next couple days. Make sure you are subscribed. And don't just hit the subscribe button. There's a little bell icon next to it. Hit that bell icon and you'll get a pop-up that says all personalized or none. Click all, all right? That's the way that you will be notified in the event that I publish new videos, giveaways. I've been doing a ton of giveaways. I just did one last night for some other cool stuff and I've got a bunch of other cool things coming. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit all so you know when I release a new video. That's it guys, if you like this video, do me a favor, give it a like down below. Thank you for watching, I got lots more to come and I'll see you in the next one.